I want to make this video as a follow up to the last one I did. In that video I showed a case of a man committing suicide over a false rape claim. Well, in between my busy work schedule I've been doing some research on this and I want to bring you a few more cases. Of course I won't read the whole articles but I will read a couple of paragraphs from each. But before we get into it I want to explain what happens with false rape claims and what they are. A false accusation of rape is an attempt to destroy someone's life. It frequently succeeds. The person accused is regarded as guilty into proving innocent. They will be shamed and shunned. If the accusation is successful, he will be imprisoned with an average sentence of 8 years. An accusation will usually cost the man his job, his home, his marriage and his children, and he won't be able to get them back even if he proves himself innocent. It often results in him being assaulted. Most outrageous of all, it can result in him being beaten to death. All of this is provable by the cases I will be showing you, but feminists will still claim that false rape cases aren't important because they are a tiny minority, or that they're actually good because they help dismantle patriarchy. Now that I've rambled on, I want to share with you just a few cases of the many, many that I found. Prepare yourselves because it's going to get a tad dark in this video. Kentucky lawmaker accused of sexual assault commits suicide. Johnson appeared to post a note on his Facebook page preceding the suicide. The accusations from NPR are false. God and only God knows the truth. Nothing is the way we make it out to be, his Facebook page read. I cannot handle it any longer. It has won this life, but heaven is my home. A suicide in Texas. On June 2nd, 2016, a clock committed suicide, mere days after learning that he'd been disciplined but allegedly harassing a gay student. Last week, his family filed a lawsuit laying out claims that, if proven true, should send chills down the spines of parents of male children. The competing factual accounts are simple and difficult to resolve. A gay student accused Clock, who was straight, of typing gays should die into the search bar of his browser during a classroom conversation about privilege. When the gay student then typed into his own computer, I'm gay, Clock then allegedly said that the gay student was a faggot and that he should consider killing himself. Clock's account was diametrically opposed. He claimed that a gay student called him beautiful. Clock then typed into his web browser, stop, I'm straight. The gay student replied, I'm gay, and then allegedly kept glancing at Clock, who eventually got up and moved seats. Police officer was on verge of suicide after false rape accusation, as woman who accused him is jailed. The officer met Samantha Murray Evans on an internet dating site and everything seemed fine for the first few weeks, until she made the callous claims, which almost caused him to take his own life. On October 13th, they had sex in Mr. Morgan's house, and and in the hours that followed, she sent him a series of sexual texts and intimate images. The following day, she returned to his house, but he asked the 44-year-old to leave. Prosecutor Catherine Richards said the next day, Murray Evans made a complaint of rape against Mr. Morgan, saying he had ripped her clothes off and sexually assaulted her. I opened the front door and seven police officers said they were there to investigate me. They arrested me in the living room. I was just petrified. These are people I know. The detective constable who arrested me gave me a bravery award for going in the tall river to save a boy. Mr. Morgan was arrested by his own force just before midnight on October 15th and taken into custody. He was suspended from duty while the allegations were investigated. Man accused of minor daughter's rape commits suicide. The deceased's father says the rape case was false and his son was framed by his daughter-in-law's relative and he ended his life due to the false allegation. Anger over the serial rape liar who drove an innocent man to kill himself. A lying woman whose false allegation of rape drove one man to suicide made the same allegation against another man and almost led him to take his own life too. The consequence of the woman's false allegations emerged when the second man was cleared by a jury of rape in just 45 minutes after a £30,000 trial. But despite being exposed in court as a serial liar, the 21-year-old woman will never be identified. Legal sources also said it was unlikely she would be prosecuted for perjury. Innocent medical student Oyumide Fadaimi, 27, was dragged through months of legal hell before the trial at Sheffield Crown Court. Yes, saw his name cleared. The jury were unaware of the woman's history when they found him not guilty. Several broke down in tears after learning of the impact of her deceit had on a previous man 18 months earlier. J17 was a sixth form student at Bittern Park School in Southampton, studying English literature, film studies and geography, and hoped to become a history teacher or a writer, but he became the centre of police investigation when he was accused of rape. The investigation ended two weeks later when the alleged victim dropped the allegation, but J was said to be absolutely distraught by the accusations and hanged himself on July 3rd. False rape accusations destroyed life of Surrey Man. A man who was falsely accused of rape by his ex-girlfriend has said it will take years to rebuild his life. Paul Joseph said Katie Woodhead, 31, who was jailed for three years on Monday, left him with nothing when she accused him of rape at their home in Surrey. He lost his job as an IT consultant, his home, and his collection of cars. Swedish theatre director commits suicide after false Me Too movement allegations. Benny Fredriksson is said to have taken his own life earlier this week after resigning from his position as head of Stockholm's Art and Culture Centre due to sexual misconduct actions 
to have turned out to be false. Teacher's hell over false groping claim, but after one of his pupils, a 14 year old girl, said that he had touched her bottom in February last year, Mr. Butter found himself suspended from the school and banned from having any contact with his colleagues, but it took another three months for Mr. Butter to be suspended after the allegations were made. He said it's an occupational hazard for any teacher. There's 1,700 teachers suspended with these allegations. 96% of those teachers are not guilty. That's a hell of a lot. The whole balance of the system is tilted against the teaching profession. These are just a few cases I found. Not all lost their lives in the most extreme way, but they all had their lives ruined by false claims. I won't prattle on for too long, but feminists, if you're watching, can you answer me this? If this was women who were committing suicide in droves because of false claims, the same ones you deny are an issue, would you finally have some empathy and call it out for the problem it is? To be honest, I doubt you would. After all, in the time of the Me Too movement, when a man can have his life ruined over a few words and have himself dogpiled for suggesting that Me Too does this, who needs proof when you're potentially signing a man's death certificate? Think about that for a second and then get back to me. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and share. I'll see you lovely people in the next one. Bye, have a beautiful time.